Hello and welcome to the Bitstocks webinar. My name is James Coughlin. I'm one of the portfolio managers at Bitstocks and I'll be running you through this presentation today. We're going to be talking about crypto market, the bulls and the bears. One thing I must say before we do kick off is please do not misconstrue this with investment advice. Uh, that is not the case. Always do your own due diligence before getting involved in any investment. Education is paramount. An investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. This is a great quote from Benjamin Franklin. At Bitstocks, we believe that education equates to understanding. It's this understanding that allows for confidence when times are tough. One thing we believe at Bitstocks is by educating the wider community, we're only going to breed more confidence into this space, and that's something that's very important at this moment in time. What will I be covering? 2018, what happened? 2019, a promising picture. And I'm going to wrap up with crypto is here to stay. So what happened over 2018? We saw price manipulation, we saw regulation come into play, we saw scaling issues, we saw ICOs, and we also saw exchanges all come under question. So how did this happen and what happened? Let's start with rumors of price manipulation. This started in sort of 2017, eked its way well into 2018. A major banking institution CEO publicly declares Bitcoin a bubble and compares it to the tulip crisis. Prices plummet, and the institutions are said to have made the largest buys of that day. Is this a coincidence? I don't personally think so. CME Group introduces Bitcoin futures, a market rife with a history of manipulation. Now, we're not trying to say by any means that the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, CME Group, are responsible for market manipulation. That's totally not the case. But what we can confirm is that throughout history, we have seen that futures have been used to manipulate markets. Regulation. So different jurisdictions. We've seen different jurisdictions across the globe actually start looking into the ways that they're going to regulate crypto. Some have started, some are testing things out, and some are looking for different opportunities. Some are watching back and seeing how other countries and, and jurisdictions are actually going about regulating cryptocurrencies. We've seen crypto bans on trading and also mining. We've seen the SEC, so the Security and Exchange Commission, start really looking into regulation and how they're going to start regulating cryptocurrencies and whether they deem certain coins to be securities. The CFTC, the Commodities and Futures and Trading Commission, have also been in the mix. ICOs, initial coin offerings, which I'll touch on in more detail later through this uh, presentation, and also the on and off ramps. So that's how people get involved with cryptocurrencies and how they sell out of them. For example, we at Bitstocks act in a pre-compliant form. So what we actually, in essence, try to do is act as if regulation is already in place. So making sure that proper AML and KYC um, due diligence is done on clients before they come on board so that this situation is mitigated. Scaling issues. This was spoken about a lot through 2018. Cryptocurrencies seek to challenge traditional systems. They aim to provide the same quantity per second as institutions such as PayPal, MasterCard, and Visa. So if we want to get to these kind of levels, we need to see cryptocurrencies ramping up the amount of transactions that they can perform per second. Now, Bitcoin, since December 2017, has been struggling with scaling issues. This is no secret. They can only manage around two to four transactions a second. If they want to compete on a merchant level with people like MasterCard and Visa, they need to be able to process thousands of transactions a second. We're now seeing good steps towards this infighting between developers for the best way forward for more transactions per second. So some, for example, wanted to see side chains. Some, for example, wanted to see larger blocks. There was different options and there's different kind of pros and cons for every scenario. ICOs, initial coin offerings. The trend of 2017 also threw into 2018. We saw a huge amount of uh, interesting uh, information come out around ICOs. The goal was large amounts of funds with no investment protection. So they were trying to raise large amounts of funds without having that real kind of regulation in place to protect those that were getting involved. Funds were raised off the back of a five to 10 page white paper with little more than an idea behind it. So what we've seen is sometimes, you know, they were just total scams. Other times, you know, they were with people that weren't able to actually facilitate the projects they were trying to do in good faith. Um, but across the board, there was a big mess that was happening. Non-accountable promises, poor delivery, and investors suffer. This certainly happened through ICOs in 2018. Exchanges. Trust has shifted as far as exchanges go. 
Many are operating illegally, specifically through 2017 and 2018, counterparty risks associated with successful hack attempts and questionable payouts. We saw some huge exchanges get hacked, and when they were hacked, they just seemed to just pay these people back out without really giving any explanations as to how they were hacked, what had happened, how they were going to mitigate this from happening going forward. Um, very questionable stuff that was happening around these payouts. Facilitating the exchange of SEC deemed securities. This is all going to come under scrutiny um, further and further, to be quite honest with you, but it was definitely rife through 2018. So 2019, a promising picture. We're seeing cleanup in all areas. Price manipulation has certainly improved with regulation being, you know, coming into full force. We're now seeing these kind of opportunities for these people in the background to not be so prominent going forward. Scaling issues are being solved and we're seeing actually great solutions placed out there. For example, BSV are working extremely well to get towards higher amounts of transactions at this present stage and doing very successfully at it. ICOs, we are now seeing ICOs wiped away from the market and we're now seeing, for example, interest in equity purchases and STO, so that would be security token offerings. And exchanges have also been cleaned up all around these whole issues that we've just discussed. So let's talk about industry investment. In 2018, we saw 3.8 billion invested into crypto startups. That's a 280% increase from 2017. Even though the price action has been brutal, investment is still coming thick and fast into this space. Now, this, for example, is not so much in the coin basis, but what they're doing is you're seeing large VC companies look into startup companies around the globe and looking for that promise and for that opportunity going forward. The reason they're doing is this is because they see the premise of where this space can go and the potential it has, and they do not want to back off at this stage. This gives the crypto space a great opportunity for 2019. Japan. So let's look at what's been happening in Japan. About 3.5 million crypto traders with annual transactions in excess of 97 billion. This is really encouraging to see. 14% of the young male workforce has invested in cryptocurrencies. The reputation of Japan is being one of the most compliant and regulatory orientated countries. The status of cryptocurrencies currently in Japan is a legally accepted means of payment. Switzerland, home to the famous Crypto Valley. Zappo announced it will relocate key business operations from Hong Kong to Switzerland, citing opaque jurisdiction. This is what cryptocurrencies are all about, transparency. And when you have, for example, Switzerland that are keying towards transparency across the board, this is really what we want to see within this space. The Swiss government classifies cryptocurrencies as virtual currencies, or more specifically as digital representation of a value which can be traded on the internet but not accepted as legal tender anywhere. The status of cryptocurrencies in Switzerland currently falls under properties. Germany. Cryptocurrencies are not legal tender, but they have been recognized as private money by the German finance minister since 2013, so quite some time now. Cryptocurrencies are subject to capital gains tax. However, if the assets are held for more than one year, they become tax exempt. Now, one thing I must reiterate at this point is please do your own due diligence. I'm not a tax advisor. You will have to look into these points. According to a November poll conducted by the German consumer centers of Hesse and Saxony, more than a quarter of Germans aged 18 to 29 are interested in buying digital assets. The status of cryptocurrencies in Germany currently sits under private money. Malta is famously called the blockchain island. Cryptocurrency exchanges, including OKX, Binance, BitBay, have set up their operations due to the development of a crypto-friendly space. Prime Minister of Malta claimed that the country became the first world jurisdiction to provide legal certainty to this space. The status of cryptocurrencies currently sits at digital medium of exchange, unit of account, and a store of value. So crypto is here to stay, but in brackets you can see there, but not all of them. So what is this and what do I mean by it? Well, let's start with real world issues being solved. We are seeing this happen, and I'd like to see it happen more and more. For example, I'd love to see the NHS take on blockchain technology so we know and we have transparency of when people are looking at our records. I would also like to see government um, MPs, for example, be put 
onto the blockchain. So when they are spending, we can see exactly where they're spending and what they're spending on. A totally public, transparent ledger in which we can check at any given point. We're also seeing banks set up infrastructure. We're seeing corporations are setting up infrastructure around cryptocurrencies as well. Merchant solutions are being improved and built out. And not all cryptos are here to stay. So let's come to that point now. What we mean by this is when we look, for example, at the way regulation is going to come into this space, we can see the SEC are already gearing up to start deeming certain coins as securities. Now, when they start going about doing it, our belief is that they're going to start with ICOs that raise huge amounts of funds. The reason behind that is because they want to make an example of these companies. And that way it will echo through to all of the other companies and all the other people that are planning to try and do something similar to do it in the correct and right way. So what my belief is that over the next three to five years, we'll see a lot of cryptocurrencies um, wiped out due to the fact that they won't be regulatory compliant um, and they won't be regulatory compliant on exchanges either. So all of these things will come under scrutiny and will be very interesting to see how they play out for 2019. It's going to be an interesting year this year. I think that you know when we look um, at the way cryptocurrencies have performed over 2018 into 2019, it's not going to be this kind of rush up with huge amounts of figures coming into the market straight away. But without a doubt, if we keep seeing the infrastructure improve around it, merchant solutions being improved and built out, um, we can only move towards the correct steps, which is, uh, which is encouraging to hear. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for listening to this presentation. Um, you can watch content for BitStocks on BitStocks TV via YouTube. You can also view our blogs on our website and a whole plethora of different content that we pop out um, on a regular basis. So look, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And I look forward to catching up with you all again soon.